everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today's a very exciting day where I'm going to show you how you can paint a bubbling brook with natural stones and this amazing, gorgeous landscape, step-by-step, -step, in acrylic, fully explained. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me bring these art lessons to you by making sure that any technique I'm describing, any color mix I'm doing, you can really see it with one of our robotic cameras. We zoom in on techniques. Now, you may have just come in because you thought this was a gorgeous painting and you'd like to know how to do it. Or maybe you're here for our 30-day paint program, Acrylic April. Either way, this is a complete and encapsulated lesson. Some things to really help you succeed at this is to check the description because on my website, there is a option to not have to draw. I do show you how to draw the stones in, but if you're not into that, I've got a free traceable. And if you don't know how to use a traceable, that's okay because I've got a free mini book where this whole lesson is explained step by step and written out instructions. All the tools are described and each lesson is even broke down to what colors I'm using and what tools that I'm using. So if you really want to do this, but you're kind of newer to painting, it'll really help you through. Now on this particular uh, painting and in general, if you're doing acrylic April, um, remember uh, in April, it's okay if it goes into May because these are bigger concepts. We're teaching landscape water concepts. So some of these go a little bit, I would say they're ambitious. Would you say they're ambitious, John? Hmm, I think they're, you know, they're, they're designed to push, push you. They're designed to push you. So if you've done 2019 and 2020, you'll still find this like a really growth space. Yeah. If you've come in because you just really want to understand landscape and water, it is going to give those concepts to you. And remember, they build up incrementally. So this lesson, even though it's got a lot going on, these are concepts we've already kind of gone into. So check the description, the materials, it's chapter stamp, so you can find your place again in the video really easily. And of course that matches the mini book. Grab your paint, grab your brushes, come back and meet me at these right now. We're gonna paint this beautiful painting. For today's project, we're gonna begin with an eight by eight canvas. I have on it a wish and intention for you guys. I wish that you find yourself anew. And what I mean by that is during this uh, painting journey, I wish that you find something out about yourself that you didn't know. It's like a rediscovery of yourself. And then I also wish that you leave this whole journey feeling more creative and imaginative than you began. So those are my wishes, hopes, and intentions for you. I have the acrylic colors, cad red medium, cad yellow medium, phthalo green, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, titanium white, Mars black. And I'm going to start uh, today's painting with a 26 bright. So that's where we're going to begin. I think, John, there's nothing to do but go on to step one. So today's a day where we're going to use another acrylic ground, which means a solid color kind of, and we're going to put it on here a little thin, a little messy because it doesn't need to be neat and tidy, but we want a solid color so we can build up layers to get the stone and waterfall effect. I'm pretty excited today, John, because I like waterfalls and stones. Yeah, me too. Well, and this is a really good value study. I'm taking burnt sienna with my number 26 bright and ultramarine blue together. And when you mix them together, you get a kind of interesting blue-gray. They make an interesting color there for that. I'm adding small amounts of water to my brush so that I can kind of keep control over that. If it goes a little more brown, that's okay. If it goes a little more blue, that's okay. And if it's streaky, that's okay. Everything is okay this morning. Yeah. Just painting up the surface. I like uh, creating these colored grounds because they allow the transparency of certain colors to play against the way some colors are opaque and build up layers that uh, are really rich. And visually interesting. They are. I like visually, uh, visually interesting things. Though, I mean, like rocks and water are always going to be visually interesting. We've been doing a lot of, uh, a lot of flat water. Mm. <laughs> so, water, water tends to be flat. Been a lot of flat water as water. Yeah, it tends to be flat. But now we're going to do some moving, falling kind of water. Oh, that's true. It does fall. It tends to roll when you get it near a shore. Yeah, it does some cool things once it's in motion or it's going someplace. We've been doing a lot of ripply flat water. Kids like to roll it into balls when it freezes. They do like that. 
I am kind of like just making sure that the canvas is solid covered. I'm not doing this back and forth to tidy it up. I'm doing it just to make sure that I've got a good beginning. Mm. And uh, on my canvas, this looks like kind of like aged denim. Yeah, it's got that kind of... Yeah, rustic aged denim look. But it's going to let me um, not only sketch in the stones easier, but it's going to allow the depth of color to build up faster when I'm trying to hit the different values. Now, at this stage, we do need to draw, draw, dry it, mm. dry it, so that we can sketch on it. So let's call this a step, and I'll meet you back with a dry canvas to show you how we're going to sketch in some stones and plan a waterfall. So I'm going to roughly sketch in the major structures of my waterfall and the plateaus of my waterfall. That way, when I begin to block in the painting, I know where objects are. And um, this is kind of a fun thing. You can use the reference painting uh, to help you. I would definitely recommend getting into that step-by-step -step mini book if you have access to that, to download that. I like to use a white chalk pencil. So this is a white pastel pencil, and that just means it's going to erase into my paint easily. You could use kids' chalk from chalkboards. You could use a watercolor pencil. I would not use a grease or oil or wax-based pencil. And that is because uh, the acrylic paint can't stick to that. Hmm. So let's say down here at the bottom is sort of a main stone structure. This is, this is the star of the show. If, 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 let's make him even a bit more of a star of the show. Let's just say that here being a big... Big man. Yeah. Blocking water. So he's just a little bit of an upward fellow. And up here, I'm going to say about this last inch and a half or so at the top of the canvas, I'm going to imply a sort of what is above the fall, what is above, what stream fall, bubbling brook. Mm -hmm. When does it, um, is it, if it, what does it take, what depth the water has to fall? I guess is my question, Internet. What depth the water has to fall for something to be a fall? Ooh, how much, fast, far, uh, you know, what is that that constitutes a fall? What constitutes a fall, I guess, yeah, is my question. Now, I'm coming across here. This is a ledge of the water, and that's where the water will begin to fall down. I do have a stone that's here, and we're going to talk about the stream coming off this way in, in a sort of agitated sort of fast way i'm going to run a, a round area above this here i'm just trying to create interesting rough shapes all right paying attention to that some of this water will go over this rock and that'll create some fun water transparency so we really do get to play with the way that water is transparent a nice big rock because i want to build a ledge here mm -hmm. gonna build a ledge and this ledge kind of comes up so that there's sort of a slab that's happening. And this is another ledge of water that will come down. And I'm going to build another ledge there. So ledges are an interesting space. What they basically are is um, the way the rocks are kind of piled on each other. Mm -hmm. so you're really actually doing rocks piled on each other. So I'm saying there's a rock and the water will fall over that. Maybe kind of come between these. Bases. It's, it's a little hard to say until you really get into it. I think we need a little boulder fellow here, kind of off there. Now, around the fall, we're going to do a lot of stones and grass and plants. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, they, they tend to kind of, stones tend to encourage growth, don't they? So when you're trying to do a fall or a natural scene like this, you're going to want to have some growth happening. I hear the rolling ones don't gather any, though. Any moss? or Is that what you heard? I heard, I heard that they don't gather any moss. Now, off here, I plan to do some forward-facing plants, like some flowers and some leaves, to imply um, the world in front of the canvas. Um, that So I won't be too fussy on this side knowing I have that, but I'm not going to sketch them in at this stage because I don't feel like those will be of benefit. Here is another kind of ledge. 
It's always fun to make things kind of have bumps. Now this ledge will have a stone that the water kind of flows over and then it'll flow, flow. It's going to go. Psh, psh, psh. I find it helps to make sounds. Mm -hmm. Definitely make some sounds, my friends. So the little rough fellow can be here. We'll bring that out. I enjoy sketching this in. It's it's a bit busy mm -hmm. to do, but it's sort of fun to do, I think. Let's say there's a nice little rock here. It's interesting to see how you construct it. How it comes in. Yeah. How they layer in. I want to make sure that I put places where shadows could be happening. Let's put a, kind of a monolithic one here. In other words, big and stately. And it will have plants around it. I just want to kind of give it a shape or something somewhat unexpected. I mean, we have the shapes that we do expect. I'll bring a, a little fellow up here. Maybe it comes forward some. You can have like a little crack in it. They have cracks, you know. Mm -hmm. And I definitely want to roll a shadowed plane there. So it's a thing. Got to keep the pencil sharpened. Got to keep the pencil sharp. Just to make sure that my sketching is, is working well. I'll tuck this in here. Um, the mason that lays natural rocks, <laughs> the forest mason, mm -hmm. is much better at this than I am. <laughs> In every conceivable way. <laughs> the forest mason. See. So we're I, just building them up. I thought the stones just rolled into place until they found satisfaction. They, you know, I can't get none. <laughs> no, no, no. I can't get any. Palm dry, drawing day. Let's carve the front of this one back. Mm -hmm. A bit. And say, oh. And then we'll do an interesting kind of chipped one. Where it's almost like a, a triangle of slab that you get. That stone has angle? I mean, it's angling for something. When I'm drawing, I can actually keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying my dad jokes are as good as your dad jokes. But I'm saying that uh, I can kind of keep up with you when you're when I'm drawing. I'm gonna regret saying that, aren't I? That's gonna become like a challenge to you, where you're gonna be like, "Oh, it's on now." There's some sympathy for the dad. There's always sympathy for dad. Dads are important beings. We're beasts of burden. <laughs> You'll never be that for me. Never. 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 Just creating little spaces of stones. And then maybe we'll talk about some ledge here that can kind of come off and, and have some lots of little plant bits. I think I will uh, also kind of crack this stone some, mm. like you do. So there's a, there's a bit of this here. And then, you know, we can talk about, we can say that there's some sort of grass and distant things up here that might be, give it a, a little, so we know that the stream is going back somewhere this way. Now, down here, mm -hmm. we need to have another little ledgy fall. I'm going to kind of turn this so I can craft what I, what I feel like is a nice little ledgy fall. Maybe I'll go like that. The water has worn it down. Mm. And you can kind of even imply uh, stones that come in that you don't really see that maybe change the direction of where some of the water might go. Mm. Right? You want to put that in there because sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get a... Rip of water that changes the directions of where things can go and where they should go. 
So we'll say there's a bit of kind of a plateauing here, and then it goes again, 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 again. Oh, my goodness, that was involved. Wow, that's so good. <laughs> now, if that seems like a lot to draw, I probably should have said this before. If it seems like a lot to draw, there is a traceable and a gridded reference. So if drawing is not your friend, you don't have to take that on. And if you download the mini book, there's instructions on how to use the tracing method to get the M and the gridding method to get the image on your canvas. Let's call this a step and come back and we're going to block this in. For the next step, I'm going to switch to a hog brush. Now, what I mean by that is I have a brush that is the shape of a bright. It's a number eight. Um, the line is Cambridge, but it can be kind of hard to find now. So what you're looking for is a bright that is, well, gosh, it's just almost a centimeter and a half here across in the ferrule. So about the width of a thumb is generally what I compare it to. And it has in it, instead of synthetic filaments, it has hog. Now, if you're going to want to use a synthetic brush, you just need a very, very stiff, rough one. And I'm choosing this brush because I want a stiff, rough brush. That's a lot of explanation, but just in case you didn't know, and you weren't here for the whole program, <laughs> you would know that then. I'm going to begin by putting in a very deep and rough background with my phthalo green and my burnt sienna. And I want this to be somewhat deep. The reason being is that I want to push this face back into the distance. I will imply that it has plant life, but I don't want to focus my attention or the viewer's attention on that space. I want everything to be about the fall. Mm -hmm. I am, you know, going more into the brown and more into the green sometimes, and that's just to create some randomness in the background. Now, it's quite dark on my canvas, and it will be quite dark on your surface as well. And guess what? That is okay. You want that. That's how we're going to get some depth going kind of back here. And when we have that really in, then I can add a little of my pad yellow into the mix, and it'll be quite, it's not going to be bright. It's going to be a very deep off green. And I'm going to make little dashing strokes. These will be the implicated background areas. So it's still green. I'm just making sure that there's some roughness here. We're not seeing any of the sky. I'm going to turn my canvas. Just to make things easier on me, sometimes you need to change the positioning of your canvas to make things easier. You can see I'm just taking the corner of this brush and I'm pulling it back. And come around here and kind of do a similar thing. I'm going to rinse out, and where that's all good, let's come back with an even darker area of green and brown that we kind of dash back in here around these rocks, just keeping that underbrush quite dark. Now I'll turn to the side again because I want to angle these little strokes in. I want a dark underbrush. Mm -hmm. It's dark under the... You got to give the animals places to hide. From predators and each other. Give me shelter. You got to give them shelter. So now we've implied a little bit of, of greenery. It's definitely there, but we're not trying to uh, put every single field of everything in hyper-focus. You want to have a focal area and make it be about some things. Let's call that a step, and then we can work on into the rock. So 
So on the rocks, I'm going to use the same brush that I used in the last step. I'm going to be back with this number eight bright Cambridge, which is the hog brush. And I'm going to start by putting in my darkest shadow. I'm going to take my brown and my black and I'm going to mix them together. My burnt sienna and my Mars black. And I'm going to come in and really exaggerate the shaded part of the rock in ledges. Um, this is for several reasons, but one is just so that as I move forward and start to create the details of spaces, I am super aware okay, so these are dark, dark spaces dark dark spaces I'm back with a little black. You can absolutely exaggerate this in any way that you need to. It really it does nothing but help you. Yeah. And anywhere you're fairly certain you're gonna have a very deep shadow, it's a good place to get that in now. Mm -hmm. I'm putting it right there. Deep shadows are what start to give these structures their eventual shape. And it can be a little challenging at first to be like, where where are these deep shadows going to go? Mm And I might switch down to a smaller brush when I come back only because I'm going to want to have a little more control around the turns. Mm -hmm. But this is a rough roughing in so it's not as critical perhaps. But already you can see that starting to create form. Oh yeah. In the surface, it's just my Mars black and my. Got to paint it black. Well, we're just trying to say, hey, you know, there's there's some shapes and shadows here. Along the water, I tend to want to uh, make things darker because the water will darken it. Just the act of things being super wet. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely do that. Coming down the fall. Now, on the rest of the stone, I can come in here and take my black and brown, and I'm going to make a mid-value gray, right? It's a brown gray, but it's a mid-value gray. We'll come back with the blue gray that we made earlier. We're just trying to build up the... sense of the light on rock. Yeah, it's hard to get good lighting on the stones. Well, I think there's some of the, there are a lot of fun to play with, though. Right? I can only imagine. You know, you can have another kind of layer of brown, gray right, that can come up at the top here. You can start to play with if you want to say, oh, this is just a little bit brighter than the rest of it. So these are all very general. Remember, these are often very green. We've got a lot of green. We've got a lot of wonderful colors to put in here. We're just starting to speak to general value. So 
I want to go darker, I just add a little black, but maybe I don't want it to be as dark as the initial shadow that I put in. So that's what I'm constantly playing with. Just trying to create that, adding a little shadow there. The highlights, little shadows, we're just coming in and putting them in. Brown, black, and white. Mm. Roughly. Roughly. Great way to talk about, oh, there's a stone here. And how you might want to express that stone. Kind of on the corner of my brush when I want to round things a bit. Mm -hmm. And already we're starting to get some rocks in the river. There, there are rocks in the river. We just need some rocks in the river, sir. Mm -hmm. Rocks in the river. You know what's in the river? Them river rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Probably some fish, too. Just rocks in the river. Waiting on a friend. You think they are? They're not waiting on a lady. <laughs> what is going on today? And I'm going to add a little shadow there. Just making little value adjustments where I need to. Take that in for a second. And remember, you're going to have the step-by-step -step pictures that you can reference as well. And so even if this is a lot to take in, you can paste that for yourself. Creating them value. Mm -hmm. Play with those values. I like the highlights on them. It's just, yeah, it's just to start. You're just starting to say, okay, where's the light hitting the tops of things? How is the light hitting them? playing with that and what's great is we'll have all this grass and earth and stuff between there so that'll create some nice dimensionality that we like very much if i want to go darker i just get some black on there it's pretty easy to play this is almost like a monochromatic study mm -hmm. this is an exciting year because i know we actually have some people that have challenged themselves to removing color from the whole the whole month and just doing monochromatic painting to improve their skill sets, which I think is really cool. If you're at the stage going, yeah, I want that resource that she mentioned, that is on the website. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, now that I'm in it a minute, I think the resource seems like a good idea. You can find that on the, on the website. There we go. I, I really like I'm... how they come together. All the little stones just appearing in the. Yeah, it's kind of fascinating, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, the stones have a lot going on, but right now we're doing what's called blocking in. Mm -hmm. And that's just where we start to say, ah, oh, some things have some value, which is light and dark. And some things have some form, and we'd like to see that form a bit. So we're going to, uh, you know, do a few things here. Yeah, it's a, what's interesting about the, the blocking in of stones is 
really kind of cool because it doesn't have that unfinished underpainting look as much as, as it does the emergent properties of a watercolor. Yes. Yes. Rocks in water are more fun to paint because they are a little akin to watercolor in that they don't have, they kind of are cool sooner. Mm -hmm. Their coolness comes in sooner. Again, my burnt sienna, my Mars black, I'm here. I've got... Maybe a slightly darker kind of zone here. So, oh, hmm. like, well, even as I paint, I'll be like, oh, I see you there. Yeah. Whereas I didn't see them before. And I've got to make sure that I see them. A couple of places. Yeah. So that I can paint them more detailed in a second. All right. So that is blocking in the stones. Um, for this stage, I would highly recommend that you do have the uh, mini book. Um, just because you'll be able to see what's happening here. Of course, if you can't, you know, get access to that, we have it in the steps and you can freeze and go back and really look at it. You know, try to keep with this program, especially acrylic April. You can look at the step, freeze it there and really take it in on your screen, even if you didn't have another resource available to you. But if you can download it and use it, I would. And really kind of look at it and try to try to assess, is this the middle gray? Is it a dark gray? Where am I putting those? It will help you get a better result. Mm -hmm. Shall we come back for more stone work? Once we have our stones blocked in, I am going to change the shape of my brush. And I'm going to do that because I want to have control around these edges a little bit more. But I still want it to be rough. So I'm going to choose to go into my number six Cambridge hog round. This is a round brush. It's uh, a little smaller than the size of a pinky. right? So it's a little bit smaller than that. And kind of comes to a tapered. These are the chunking hog bristles, which means that they kind of curl in and the brush doesn't go that would be the difference between a, a decent hog brush and one that's not. Again, you could probably use a round at this stage that was stiff that would give you a good rough effect. And mm. you can also lean into the dry brushing to also get a rough effect. But now we're going to kind of start to create the sense of uh, really specifically rocks. And they have so many colors on them. I think that's the thing that's sort of interesting. I'm going to take a little of my brown and a little of my cad yellow together because right, they're kind of an, an, a neat color for this. And it's okay to get the gray into it at this time. So we're kind of changing up the gray a little. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start to create some of this personality in some of these spaces. Got to get the brush to dance around a little bit. You got to get the brush to dance around a little bit. You're going to be rough. Taking a little brown. This is where the worksheet, if you guys haven't been using the worksheet, this is a great place to get into your worksheet where you can practice the values, how light or dark these mm -hmm. different colors are. Because you want to kind of keep that, even as you change a color, like so say I get a, a little blue into my color for over here. Mm -hmm. I still want it to be, you know, value ready. Oh, yeah. So if I'm highlighting something, I want it to feel like, I'm highlighting it. If I'm deepening it, I want it to feel like I'm deepening. I'm going to really paint at these rocks. Kind of thinking about how they are. I'm using the blue in this mix here because the rock is a little wet. That helps it sort of reflect the sky. I might get a little more blue and white into it. And that's a that's a bit of a uh scritchy brush that work I should say uh scratchy. Scratchy brush that uh, it it's lets you work a little looser, huh? It's going to let me work a little looser and on rocks it's a great place to practice loosening up. You know, if you need to practice loosening up. You have your 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 brush tip is dancing around there on the block. 
in and as it dances, you know, we get highlights, we get different little events, and you can kind of see how we're starting to really create some shape. Yeah. Some thoughtful shape. Now, if I have a color that I really like and I feel like it could be a couple other places, I'm going to find those places it might be and kind of go there and put it a few places as I go. I find with rocks, though, it's just coming through and being like, what value are you? How light or dark are you? And then giving them texture and personality. It's important when you're using a hog to rinse out often and then really dry it out because they can get very soft and mushy. No. So, things to think about. Rocks are so super colorful. Mm -hmm. See, I'm just dancing around trying to create little discolorations, you mineralizations, I think, is what I think of. Mm -hmm. So nice. Just relaxing to do. It's it's a bit, you have to be a little thoughtful in it, mm -hmm. but that's okay. You can handle it. Keep the brush moving around. Yeah, and I like to just, and remember we talked about engaging and releasing the brush? I'm engaging and releasing the brush to create this random randomness that we're trying to capture here. Okay. Right? And the other thing is, is like, the thing to remember about rocks and the reason they're just a joy as a subject matter is that as an artist, there's so much going on here mm -hmm. that you can that you can play with and and think about creating uh, lots of dimensionality. I haven't even gotten into the color. We haven't even mossed them yet. We're just talking about the stone. Yeah. Well, the stones always had a lot of personality. Uh, how weird would it be for like the stones to be like come into this lesson and be like oh my gosh and it's about us again where can we go where it's not about us there's got to be a point where you're famous where you're just like where can i go where it's not about me i, I don't know i don't know if Mick jagger paints i think there Mick jagger can do anything I, is he still with us i hate to ask that question but i don't know hmm. you know i i had not heard of him it's been it's been a rough series of losses, you know, recently. I'm adding some like yellows and grays. So what you see me mixing is I'm alternating between my burnt sienna, my cad yellow, uh, my Mars black and white to get some values. And then sometimes I'm also getting between my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue, black and white to get some values. So those are how I'm getting those little stone colors. No, the Jagger is 77. Oh, the Jagger is 77 and doing well? He's still, he's still got the moves. He's a septuagenarian? Is it septuagenarian? I don't know. I just like it when people like it referred to. I will not take that from an octogenarian or septuagenarian. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think... It seems so age-specific. I was I, watching something. It was like, it just cracked me up because the main character was like, ah, I'm, ah. You rebel against things I don't understand that you're rebelling against, but rebel away if it makes you feel better. I would say if rock and roll has a bedrock, it's the Rolling Stones. I would say you are probably right. But I don't watch all of the uh, rock professors that you watch. I don't John watches not... a lot of professors of rock. Sometimes I'll rinse rock. out and come in and, and define shadows in these stones. I don't know. I don't know if he's done one on the Rolling Stone. I'm sure he has. I just haven't watched it. I should I mean, go do that. He has to have, right? I will go check it out after the show. Check it out. I'm all. You've got my. my have your attention now. On the stones. So sometimes around the stones, you'll see me come in and and kind of darken and and define some space a bit. I find that to be a good idea.
You just got to find your spot. Mm -hmm. It's interesting we go quite light right here, kind of create a little reflection. Hmm. Maybe up here as well. Do that. So you can see they're just starting to take shape. They really are. They take the shape, and then you know what they do? Nothing, because they're rocks. They just sit there. <laughs> <laughs> they don't worry about you at all. <laughs> they're just rocking. <laughs> they're just. They're they doing have, rock stuff, which is nothing. <laughs> have no worries. There's no words. They're just quietly rocks. You're just like groaning, oh, please don't let it be another show about rocks or something that I got to go look up and watch. <laughs> oh, now I've just been sucked into YouTube videos about animals, but I got stumped at the, the carnivorous deer. I have to tell you something that just ruins the forest for you is to find out the deer can be carnivorous and then footage of them being so you're like, whoa. I'll never feel okay about deer again. I like right before this video, I would like look out into the yard and be like, deer. Oh, and now I'm going to be like, deer. <laughs> it's just, it's just a different experience now. They ruined it for me. <laughs> the saying it happened. It does. I tried to ruin it for John too. Cause you know, you never want to be like alone and something being ruined, but he was like, he refused. He was like, I don't even want to know. You need to know it's bad. What you don't know about the deer could get you killed. You know, I'm I'm pretty safe from deer. I have never naturally yeah, run into one. Yeah, I think you're you're probably pretty safe from deer, but I would say Twix is of a size <laughs> where she might not be if things were bad. I don't know out there in the forest. But I mean, I'm adding dark values and blues and grays around here. I've not run into brush. a lot of deer in the in, in just like walking on the street like, hey, deer. This just doesn't happen. Doesn't happen to you? No. Occasionally, I see them in the backyard, but they run away. Do they run away? Get a little forward of that kind of burnt sienna there. Maybe there's more iron in this rock. So whenever you see more red in a rock, I mm. generally believe that it has more iron in it. Mm. It can. I think it's happening. I'm sure that's one reason it could have more red in it, for sure. That's the one I always go with. Uh, it's as, a as far as I got in earth space science, so iron oxide rock. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to come back and uh, put some dark values in unexpected places on rocks. Those can be shadows in the stone, or they can be like discolorations. So you'll see me also kind of go through and we can make a little shadow shelf right here. And there's a bit of a See how it just kind of creates that sense of, oh, wow, something happened to the rock there. Personality. Personality. I'm going to do the colorful moss in okay. a separate layer so that we're just doing the burnt sienna, ultramarine, Mars black and white mix. In the burnt sienna, cad yellow, Mars black, and white mix. That's all we're playing with. That way you don't get so overwhelmed by the color mixes. Hmm. Is my thinking here might help you. Might not, but it might. It can be really hard to find your stone. You just got to keep looking until it shows up for you. You're just playing values. little stones hidden here and there and again when the green when the mosses there's a kind of yellow moss and a kind of green moss when they get on it it's a whole nother thing don't underestimate your moss 
I will not. The other thing, even though this hog brush is, you know, uh, still fluffy and scratchy, the other thing is it does give you a slightly sharper point on things, which can help you. If I want to come here and say, yep, there is a plateau at the top of the rock. Why do I want to say that? I don't know. It's good for me to practice those things. You just want to make sure that, you know, you are getting values of light to dark. More than, more than anything, try to catch those values, the Adams Family values. Mm. And you'll see me just connecting and disconnecting the... It's a little shape, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Distinctively that you understand, oh, that's, it's got shapes. I say it has shapes because it does. Again, got to keep drying out that brush with that towel. And so rocks are never like just really round or really sharp or just really anything in this kind of uh, environment. They'll generally be a combo of things. Mm -hmm. um, now, different parts of the world, that changes. So you've really got to observe what you're looking at. You don't really have a rule of rock. <laughs> There's no rule of rock. 4-4 mm. tends to rule rock. I knew you were going to do something like that. I knew it. I was like, do something. And that's kind of like, man. And each value kind of pulls of shape and form out of you know out of nothing right the trick is to make sure you've got some deep values like some really strong values a few places that are so that you start to get uh, dimensionality mm. So I'll go even into like the black. And that's why it's so crazy when people are like, don't use black in landscape. Uh, shadow happens. I don't know what to tell anybody. <laughs> Sometimes it applies. Sometimes it applies. Sometimes it's nice to use ultramarine blue. I agree, but it's not like, it's not like someone should smack the brush out of your hand. <laughs> I have talked to people that I feel like somebody explained their their thought on landscape color theory so voraciously it was like the brush was slapped out of their head you never use black and landscape no even your true blacks tend to have a color bias don't they even your true blacks have a color bias and um you know this cad yellow in mars black makes a pretty decent landscape green mm -hmm. go figure um what happens i think what goes on for people is that they start to have some bad experiences with, say, using too much black in a landscape. Right? They were just using too much black in the landscape, and the landscape got a little muddy, and then they applied a, well, never rule to it. Well, then never. And I, I would say, just work on controlling the way you mix your black in your landscape. 
and also like if you mix one of the blacks like and i only know this anecdotally that mixing black with colors doesn't always result in a darker color it sometimes results in a different color because of the bias of black well it, it will always it will always shade right like i if i mix black into yellow it's going to shade mm -hmm. the yellow yep it's going to be green if i have more black it's going to shade deeper to that black and if i had a lighter value it's going to shade into that lighter value so the shading won't stop but but what it is is because of the bias of the black and if you mix it into just every color to darken it it just like if you mix white into every color to lighten it you, mm -hmm. you get some really maybe not ideal results maybe not your favorite and it's okay that they are not your favorite I'm just adding little light values and shadows here. That white spot there is too much, so I've got to take that down. Mm. Okay. You don't want a big spot of white white on a rock right now at this stage is going to be like, what? 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 Say what again. <laughs> Sorry. So we film these together. Um, and we put them together for this acrylic April program. If you're just wandering in here, hit the subscribe button because we teach art for free all year. This particular program is a big connective course that teaches concepts together. So this one is uh, water and landscape and it's free. You just find all the videos and do them. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you're doing this every day, like we are, cause it's a daily painting for us as well. It's a daily filming for John and it's a daily painting for me. Um, sometimes multiple multiple times a day, um, we do get a little weird. So bear with us. <laughs> I imagine as we get deeper into the month, things will get stranger, because we go through the same stages that the people doing the daily painting go through as well. There we go. I'm sorry. I just put too much thought into that rock, and it didn't need that much thought. That it got fun and I didn't want to stop, and that's what happened. So that rock is done. Nope. <laughs> I touched it again. How am I doing it? I like that rock. Something had just, I'm going to go on. <laughs> uh, definitely we'll want to take a stretch break after this. Mm. I'm going to kind of curve my brush stroke here just because. Lightly dust this here. I think this one will have a little more of a that aspect and curve a bit of a shadow around the side of it. It rounded. Mm. Around your rock. And if I sometimes I'll get out there and I'll be like, oh, that brush is too wet. So if I notice that, I will definitely get in and dry it out with my towel mm -hmm. and then just reshape the brush if I need to. Creating some personality there. I feel like I'm going to go here with this one. I'm going to add some white to this. Kind of give it sort of more of a sharpie edgy here. I roughed it in, but I just feel like that needs a little more of a. Yeah. Hmm. And then I'm going to come in and shade it. So I will rinse out if I'm thinking about one specific project, right? Like I'll come in and get some black hair, like this rock. And I want to give it a more 
kind of sharp considered shape. I might take that moment to And I like to deepen sometimes between the rocks with just a dark color to catch a few of them a little more, especially along the shore here. If I know I'm along the shore, I'm going to deepen the value along that shore. And that will help define the space that the water is going to be. You're painting at a table. This is a fairly long stretch. Mm -hmm. And it's important that you get up and you stand and you move around, um, especially if you're feeling any pressure or strain in your back of any kind. Just get your little stretches. You got to get your little stretches in. Just working in these little moments. And if I take away a value that I wanted, I just come put it back in. So if I'm like, no, I really wanted you light up here. Yeah. I just come put that back in. If I'm like, I want that surface at that angle. Believe it or not, some sharp angles in your in your rockscape is very good. You want sharp angles in your rockscape. We're not that far from done. We're just going to kind of come around here and come back, and then we'll call it a step. We're just going through these colors, mm -hmm. making sure we've got the values that we're looking for. Kind of creating some interesting little upward shale. Why? Because it just made me happy, and I felt like it. thought it was an interesting shape in the distance. I like the rocks coming together in here. They're kind of fun, right? Yeah, very fun. Just pull those in. I can see how if one was less chatty, this is very much an ASMR activity. Mm. I am chatty because I teach, but. I like how the rocks come to be. You know? I very much as well. Good idea to rinse out every once in a while. Even as I come back down to put in a little more detailing mm -hmm. to everything. You know, it's just a good idea to rinse out periodically. Of fun to come in and talk about some color. Yep. And you just sort of get that muddled little surface using the brush. Yeah, I'm just trying to touch up and down. I'm trying to make my brush stroke feel kind of irregular. I'm trying to uh, make sure that I, I'm changing up color so that the stones feel like, you know, stones. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a little process. It is. You've got a little process going on here that you've got to play with.
you're pretty dry on the brush, which means you don't have a lot of water in your brush for any of this. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. You can always come through here with a dark value and define anything I want. Including maybe a split in the rock. The cracked rock. Well, you got to keep in mind, like, as we run the water down, we want to kind of imply that there are maybe stones under the water as well. Mm hmm. That might be peeking out. You know, the, as it goes down. And so we've got to play with that. So, like, I'm adding a little brown there. But I'm still keeping that shadow there. I can always come in with a little of my kind of implied color. And some of that'll some of that will come in, you know, as we So let's keep adding more dimensionality to the rock there. I'm going to take my little brown back into my black. And we're just going to give them personality. Mm -hmm. That's what they need. You know, when somebody says the personality of a rock, they must mean that you're quite colorful and stable. <laughs> well, you know. I just don't know I would even take that as an insult anymore. <laughs> After this painting, I think I'd be like, yes, thank you. I think that. Fraggles are rather fond of that compliment. <laughs> uh, I wonder if Fraggles would paint these rocks. I think Fraggles would definitely paint these rocks. Maybe in different colors. Maybe there'd be more, you know. Adding some yellow. So we're still just at, we're just kind of in these mixes, just trying to make rocks. Roxies have suddenly become a Smeagol. <laughs> Gollum. Uh, the Roxies. <sighs> That's a weird thing. Like on my mom, mm. weirdly does uh, Gollum when she wants something, but I don't know if she knows she's doing Gollum. <laughs> but she's doing Gollum. <laughs> she refers to herself as Gingy, and then she talks like Gollum, and I have to wonder, like, does she know she's doing Lord of the Rings? Are it's you effective. Just being silly. She being silly. That where she's one of the villains from uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Weird stuff. Random things. I'm saying. Why am I saying random things? Because I'm painting random things on rocks. Random things on rocks. Random things on rocks. And like I mentioned before, if we have spots of white, then we got to take that out and blend that in because we don't. Those mm -hmm. are really pull our eye. You know, if I need to, I'll come back with a little bit of. So what I want to do is just make sure that that crevice looks crevicey. Mm. So I'm going to rinse out. And you can do a weird thing where you even pinch your brush. Pinch your brush? Yeah, pinch your brush. And that can sometimes help you get a hard edge on a brush that's normally pretty fluffy. If you, you know, are trying to figure out what to do about a brush that's pretty fluffy. And remember, rocks can have deep undercuts. So that's why sometimes we'll add a dark kind of shadow like that to say, oh, there's a strange undercut. Mm. You just pick your undercuts. Like This is where my rock be undercut. And then your rock's like, you don't know me. You don't know my you, dreams. You can't contain this rock. And I have to wonder, what does the rock say? <laughs> oh, my gosh. We have to moss the rocks. Well, then you'd be. You like... know, John, mm -hmm. I love you. Yes. And when I said we should do landscapes and water, 
this year? Yes. And you said that seems big. It is big. And you said it seems like a lot to take on. <laughs> and I was like, don't you trust me? I do. And you said yes. And now here we are. <laughs> on day 10. <laughs> I acknowledge that this has become a very ambitious free painting course. Not just this individual lesson. If you've just come here for the individual lesson, lesson you found like a treasure on YouTube because it's an amazing lesson. But if you've come here for the whole program and you're like doing the 30-day program, you're like, oh, uh, <laughs> this is bigger than I expected. It has those moments. It does. It has those moments. I'm adding the blue. So remember we were doing the blue and black and brown yep. for one gray. And then I'm just reminding because like sometimes it's hard to keep in mind, right? What all uh, we had. Sometimes. I think it's important also like on the on the rocks that could be in the water where they may be a little bit wet to mm -hmm. uh, really lean into that possibility. Up here on the rock, Fraggle Rock. <laughs> I like I like how they just sort of develop in the sunlight. Yeah. Again, it's it's a lot more fun. I always felt like uh, in art when you have to practice your values, right? Like you fold up fabric and throw it out on a table and paint all the folds, or you, you know, go out and put up geometric shapes. There's like these uh, weird art lesson kits that you can get where it's like a triangle and a ball and a I think they're just wood blocks that somebody repackaged. But where you you know you paint those things, you light them and then you paint them. Right? And that the idea is that you're learning value. I think you get a lot out of rocks in that same way. Mm -hmm. Except that they're so much more fun. And I do truly think that they are more fun. And I like to come in and sort of deepen some of the values that are going on so that, um, you know, we've got falls, we've got stuff, but as we come along this little edge, oh my goodness, we are seeing the end of this tunnel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a rock joke here that I could put here. And it would fall like a rock if I tried to tell it, I'm sure. Yeah, I did. I did. Oh, you know. Those jokes, not everyone can do them. I'm going to let that go. But don't worry, it's all over now. We've got these little... Dark spaces that we know we want to have. Mm -hmm. That we're putting down here. I'll get into them a little more later. You get to thinking about stuff and you're like, hmm. And Jirak is like, no. <laughs> Just finish it. You still have moss. What are you doing? You don't have any time for messing around. Don't you know the moss is coming? The green moss is coming. The green moss is coming. I like the moss on them. You like the moss on them? Mm -hmm. I like the moss too. The moss is going to be like, this is when it becomes that like amazing living stream. Even before we add any little implications of plant life or anything, mm -hmm. it'll be somewhere in that space. I'm just adding some of this, maybe more yellow. And you're continuing just to muddle more and more light. And, and kind of colors and discoloration. And so... Really, that's our goal is just to give them 
form. And when they have form, then they are done. And I feel like this is as far as I want to go with this rock uh, part. Uh, now I want to grow stuff on the rock. Okay. When we come back, moss! So now we're back. And we get to make these rocks feel like they have been here in this spot for a millennia. Say it with me. A millennia. Well, them, but also you, John. A millennia. Millennia. <laughs> millennia. Millennia. It's been a long time. So, it is a long time. How long is a millennia? I don't know. Not as long if you're a rock. It's like a, it's a rock moment. It's a moment in your rock life. So. <laughs> I'm going to take a little of my green and brown, and I'm going to create some uh, deep moss. It's there, you know. It might be down a little more in these dark values, right? And then as we come forward, you want to get a little more of the yellow into it. It's still not the brightest green that you can think of. It's a little brighter. And you're just barely touching things, right? Mm -hmm. You can even get some weight into the deep moss. Because you're not trying to change the overall value of this rock. The rock does not need your approval to feel valuable. <laughs> no. But you are adding some weight sometimes in some yellow, trying to make it seem like things have happened. Important things. So we're just going to dance between the cad yellow, the thala green, the burnt sienna, and the white, making lighter and darker values of green. Like you do. Or we do now. Because hmm. we do it together. We do. I'm just adding more yellow into it because I'm like, oh, it should be a little lighter than even when I'm painting. You know, and it kind of happens everywhere. Moss happens. Mm -hmm. everywhere. It just grows there. It does because it's like, oh, fuel, thank you. <laughs> And it decomposes the rock. It eats on the rock, too, I believe. Hmm. It gets a hold in there and, like, its little root system probably. Which kind of breaks down the rocks. I think that's how rocks are turned into soil is this mossy stuff. If you're a botanist and I'm completely wrong, it's okay to correct me. Does not bother me in hmm. the least. You see, we just add a little bit of this green. It's okay to come in and get some darker greens. Yeah. Some more brown green. And the stuff really does go everywhere. It's just everywhere. Mm-hmm. So... You really get everywhere to the sunlight touches, it likes to grow. It really do. And sometimes it grows away from the sun in the shady spot because it gets too hot. So it just depends on your kind of moss. Yeah, it it, it, be the sunny it side knows moss. what it needs. It it picks its it's like it knows what it needs. It goes, you you don't know me. I know what I need. Well, the only issue, we don't want to go too mossy because we want our um, plant life to sort of pop mm -hmm. and uh, still have some ability for all of that to show. So we do want some of it. We just got to think about what we want. And there's really kind of like a also a, a blue-gray moss that happens, which is why I was like, you just really want that to wait for that. Mm-hmm. 
So that's also fun. And I think it's enjoyable to just kind of go like, where does the moss grow? Where does the moss grow? Very damn fun. That was unfortunate for all involved. No. Where does the moss grow? And you see, much like with the uh, discoloration of the rocks, I do try to uh, engage and disengage the brush so that the positioning is sort of random and more dancey. Dance, dance. I'm going to take a little yellow and white and. Also add some spots of this type of moss. Maybe a little. You can see every time you add something, it adds something. Every time you put in a little personality, the rock mm -hmm. has a little more. I get it. You want me to shine? He's like, yeah, I do. You're painting. You're supposed to be like colorful and beautiful. And the rock's like, I don't, I don't answer to you. <laughs> I define my own sense of beauty. But you can see that just a little bit of that really starts to create. It really does. A bunch of stream. And sometimes I like to, you know, kind of evaluate and look. And remember, if you come back, you can always bring some brown back. If you need to change up some of the moss. So it's possible to make that if it gets away from you. To do that. And then we have that weird kind of blue white lichen. Very strange little lichen that happens here and there. Really know what its rules for growing are. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put it too many places because I think it could get away from us quite a bit in the painting. I just think it's nice to include it because it does have a natural a natural base. All right, little bits of it could be here. Touching it, touching it around. Isn't that lovely? Mm -hmm. And while I'm here, I'm going to take my green, maybe my ultramarine, but for sure my green. And none of this area here actually shows. It's all going to be overgrown. So I'm just going to take this moment to just start biasing the space into the green range. Quite dark. I mean, why not? I'm here. And it really, it's, now it starts to look much more like water has started to flow around the rocks. Yeah, That's going to be through here. Right now we're doing the green and the blue to create the, the overgrown area around it. Mm -hmm. When we get into here, that's going to be so much fun. Yeah, the more you fill this in, the more it's just looking like a little... Like you can see the riverbank and you can see the rocks and you just around the river bend. I think that's a this is more of a stream <laughs> babbling brook. The, the brookie bend. You would be carrying your There's a brook treat. <laughs> There's a book book tweet. <laughs> what is it? Un tweet, uh, I don't remember. They, remember yeah, trouts are treats. They were just brookies. That's little, not treaty at all. Trout, little brook trout. Little all French right. brook trout. We're going to take a picture of this where it is. Um, definitely dry it and make sure it's there because we're going to put in. Um, all right. I think it might be interesting to get our uh, some of our grass and some of our water. And we're going to start playing with those two because there's some different overlaps. And so it's not just a one layer and then another layer. It's kind of a mix mash. So we'll come back and start putting that in. Woo!
So we're going to move on in our journey of water, and we're going to actually put in some water in the painting finally. I'm going to keep using this number six because it's just a really good brush for this project. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually start getting into my phthalo blue, and I might get some phthalo, uh, um, some burnt sienna into it. It creates kind of a green brown, which is sort of nice, especially when I'm starting to think of water. If you look there, it kind of does a neat deep aquatic feel. I'm going to come to the back up here and I'm going to start to speak to this idea that there is a distant bit of something happening back here. Mm -hmm. uh, water doesn't flow uphill, so that's just an important thing to keep in mind when you are painting is you've got to be able to show what it is where it would be coming down the hill. You know, and I can start to maybe think about how this comes down here. And um, you can imagine that a little bit maybe wanders over here. It pulls in. Just the start of something. Mm -hmm. I do like to have it peeking all the way through, right? But we also can have plants here. So even as you paint this down, you know, no, you may be tucking plants into it. Another important thing to realize is, is that we're going to be keeping some of the brown and we may even have to paint it back in as we go. But we're just starting to have the conversation even with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'll kind of wiggle this through about what this might look and be like, how it might flow through this space where the water has a landing I'm going to start changing my brush stroke directionality to more of that horizontal that we were doing for a week <laughs> it didn't go on for any amount of time did it hmm. no you know, but I'll be thinking about those those things it's always fun to um, imagine that there's some coming, you know, different places. So I like to tell the story of things as they're happening. Okay, so I just want to make sure I take this moment to really explain my thinking before I get so deep into it. Okay. I'm going to be pulling water down the hill, and the water is voluminous, so it'll fill spaces. I have to think about how it's going to do that. I have to imagine how its pressure is going to build up in spaces, and it's going to pour over things. It is transparent and reflective. It's not intrinsically blue. I'm just enjoying using this color. So we're going to have to kind of even still speak to the rocks that we have here, maybe even painting them back in as, as we go. So you're going to see me do verticals like this, but also, you know, horizontal wiggles like this. Another thing to think of is that up here at the top where the water is, say, starting to crest, is maybe the lightest space. That we're going to have here. All right. So can you see how that's starting to show it's cresting? Mm -hmm. And if it's cresting there, I've got to talk about it being kind of light up here. And this isn't the only lightness of water we're going to talk about. We're just explaining what our thinking might be around the topic. 
how we're going to use value and uh, directionality of line to express something that's so kind of, uh, well, fluid, mm -hmm. <laughs> for want of a better word. It's such a fluid topic. So you'll see me turn my canvas where I'm just needing to do so to orient my brush stroke or to get a sense of how I'm, how I'm seeing something. That'll be a, that'll be a big deal to me. And the, and the, and the phthalo blue and the burnt sienna, this is just a way for me to kind of think about and control some of the space here while I'm getting a handle on where I'm going to put things. Where water is moving rapidly, it tends to be white, mm -hmm. you know, and where it's uh, thin, it tends to be transparent, like if it's very, very thin. So that'll be something to think about. Even as we go over here, like it's almost like a glaze. I don't want to take out. everything that I see here if I want it to seem realistic. See how when you can see the rock underneath it? Yeah. If I lose anything, I can always kind of come back and be like, oh, no, no, there's a little brown here that you see. You can talk about that there's stuff there that you see. So that's how we're going to try to maintain that, and we're going to be dancing between those things, turtles all the way down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like when the the brighter highlights start to come in because it really gives that shape to the flow because it's the, it's the highlights that your eyes see when the movement and so it really just makes a difference doesn't it yeah when the bright highlights start coming in then you start to see the movement in the water but it's not as you know it's because that's where all the sparkle happens and what's great is you know it can splash I can tap the brush up and down, talk about splashes. Water is really a lot of fun to, in my mind, paint. Like, but coming back here where I have it coming down here. I definitely want to maybe put some stone back, you know, if I'm going to speak to that. And I'll just keep playing with the white, pulling it down. If I lose control with my brush, I just rinse it out. I don't, don't get too stressed out about it. Um, And when you're trying to say that it's transparent, you just literally paint some of the reflections. And if the rock is showing through, then it will seem like that water was transparent coming mm -hmm. down to this space. Yeah, that kind of creates the ledge. It does. Which is like just my favorite. Let's look at that for a second. So, you know, you can spend as much time in this, gosh, as you want to. Those layers just can. Now, there's a good question. Hmm. If you overworked a fall, could you paint it back? Could you paint the rock back in? You would just paint the rock values back in. You would just paint in some gray and some dark value. Because the trick of how the fall looks like it's here is the fact that we see some of the reflection coming all the way down. And so we're like, well, surely the fall goes all the way down. So this is one of those ones where you don't have to be as concerned if you overpaint a rock because you can repaint the rock. Right. You can definitely repaint the rock. And the rock will not even be offended. 
not even offended. It's like, I was here anyway. Doing his rock thing. You know, like right there, I'm like, I'm not liking that. It's not really working for me. I can come back and take it back up pretty easily. Because I feel like from the positioning of things, there wasn't any way for water to get there. And that's another thing that you've got to look at. Can my water have gotten there? Wherever you're putting a fall, there has to have been something above what you're doing. Like, I could feed water from here down here, but I can't feed water from here up here. Hmm. And so if I notice that it feels like the water is going uphill, then I have to change what I am doing with the water. Have to. Have to. And will, without apology. <laughs> Now I can uh, speak to that water being back there. Mm -hmm. Come back with a little bit of this dark color where you want to deepen it. And you really just have to decide, is there a fall here, right? Or are there going to be plants here? Oh. And that's, you know, what you need to think about. And I think I will do kind of a little bit of both. You have to be a little bit of a beaver sometimes and build a restraint for the water. Mm -hmm. So if there's a ledge holding it there, you have to give it a ledge holding it there. Yep. Hold back the water a little bit. You do. Got to hold back the water a little bit. And then we'll put some plants here, which will, you know, probably imply that there's a rock or something there. I'll add a little bit of a shadow of something there. Underneath the waterfall? Mm-hmm. Let me just kind of come down. Important to highlight not everything but some of what you've got going on. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that look lovely? That's very nice. It's just a lot of fun. The highlights are my favorite part. Highlights are my favorite part, too. It's where the water kind of comes together, and if I lose a rock, I just come back with it. So the water goes behind the rock, not through the rock, unless the rock has an actual hole in it. And you can see me changing sometimes the directionality of my surface to make sure that I what I'm doing here is I'm flowing water around the stone. Mm. Right? Because the pressure of the water is coming from the fall, that's the energy. And it hits these solid objects and it's gonna flow around the stone. But also, it has to interact with the shore. It's really interesting how you get to have it do both things. And you can take like the little dark blue with a little bit of the burnt sienna. 
and really play with the color. the white to play with the highlights. Sometimes the water hits a little hard. But then you go back. If you got to go back at any point, you can if you're like, that's too bright. There you go. That's how we're doing it. That's looking really good. Water falls all the way down. Mm -hmm. Just dancing back and forth. The little sparkles, little bits in the water. I'm very gentle on the touch here. I really want it to look like the water has gone transparent over the rock. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a nice fall over that rock? Mm -hmm. So how do we paint transparent things? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> we don't paint transparent things. We paint the impact of light and shadow. We right. paint what we can see. We don't paint the part we can't see. And I think that gets, there's a mind bender there when people are painting water, whether it's pouring out of a glass or pouring over a rock. It's like, well, it's transparent. Yeah, that means you see the rock. Mm -hmm. So you paint the rock. And then you paint the highlights, and together that creates that sense of, oh, there's water running around a rock. If the water was stiller and it was clear to the base, you would paint the floor. Yeah. Of the river. So it would be stones and stuff with reflections on it. Now, what's wonderful about this mm -hmm. is that a lot of this is behind some plants, so some of this work. Don't get too, too here because you're going to lose a lot of this to some plants. Sometimes I like to get into the blue again when I'm doing this. So there's a nice fall that's happening there.
Sometimes I'll come back with some black. Just make sure that the area that needs to be as dark as it is, is as dark as it is. And then if this had that much water next to it, it would be, you know, darkened. Water coming down there. Mm-hmm. more on here and again you've got to be careful because we know we've got a lot of plants coming here but you do want enough that so if the, if the plants peek out yeah that you are uh, seeing what you're hoping to see I go back and forth and down and down. Big lesson, I know. But that's how we get this to fall down this hill. Waterfall down. When you see a fall kind of come out like that, generally there's like a rolled up boulder or surface or something that's causing it to rush that way. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot coming down here. I will have to uh, rinse my brush out and and I think about it here. Now, I think I'm going to want a kind of focus. So there'll be like a clear area and a little bit of heading and then some white. So, and then I may come in with a little bit of my brown and yellow. And then dry because I want to make sure that there's some stone that feels a little lighter. That's what I'm doing here. A little bit lighter on the stone. I just want to. I want it to mm -hmm. show. So I'm gonna dry that real fast. I'm gonna dry that. Okay. And then come right back and finish this. No, I just wanted to make sure that was dry. So when I did this next part, it was a. Uh, it was here. It'd be interesting what we paint and what we don't paint here. And a lightly dry brush. This there's not a lot of water on my brush. This is really fun. Look at that. Not a lot of water on the brush. Just starting to put the water in this one I will pay attention to. And the reason we're going to pay attention a little more to this particular ball is it's a little, it's a little more in focus. come here and create a stopping point for the water and it's going to redirect the water it's a pretty hard point so mm -hmm. we're going to get some splashes see how we, we're stopping it we're saying it's going to go over this way it gets some splashes wherever it stops that hard doesn't do so ever without Thought. Mm 
and then back into this little down spot. And again, I, I'm doing the work just for what might be showing through. Mm-hmm. Um, but most of that's going to be covered. So you don't, that's just not the, I have a saying is, you know, uh, it's not the, the battle I want to fight. This is a battle worth knowing about, and you could, if you're going to leave this open without plants or any like foreground, um, any little plants showing through, then you might want to get very specific. But if you're putting plants over it, you just need enough so that the plants that are showing look very uh, in- integrated into the landscape. Hmm, that makes sense. So hopefully the water looks like it's, you know, flowing down this way. Uh, a little bit coming through here. There we go. Now, interestingly enough, I'm going to kind of show some, maybe some rock or something that's under here. Oh, yeah. Some impl- some little implied rock space. Well, yeah, it's something that's redirecting and stopping the flow and sending it maybe that way. As it's about to pick up speed again. on its way down the mountain. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's really that that chill. You know, I'm going to call this a step because that was a lot to do. It was a lot to take in and process and digest and come back and we'll get on to the next layer of this wonderful painting. So for this next part, I kind of want to make my water pop. And to do that, I need to add some bright, intense reflections. And I'm going to use my uh, number four round uh, from the Eric Triple Line. But you just want a round with a good point that is designed for heavy body paint. And if I have to, I may even get into a, a even more of a detailed piece. But I'm going to load up just on the toe some of the paint. In a few places, I'm just going to make not brushy, but kind of thoughtful highlights. The other thing I'm going to do is like where the rocks might be wet, I'm going to add some highlights where they're a little shimmery, hmm. right? Because along places, especially like along here where there might be a little splashback, and you can tone it if you want to with ultramarine, but there would be a little reflection along here. So it's important, like, we try to capture uh, some of that. Mm -hmm. See that it just kind of helps us get that next. Yeah. Just, just you know, interesting, fascinating little space that's coming down. And if that's too bright, which I'm thinking that is, I just come back with a little bit of ultramarine. And tone those back a bit. But, you you know, in a rock, the water is going to hit it. Mm -hmm. And make uh, highlighted spaces. That is happening. I'm trying to look for those spots. 
that might see that. And also look for those spots in the water coming down that could use their own highlight. I need to turn the surface to the side to get a better angle. And I'll absolutely do that. You know, popping a little more motion here and there. You know, maybe a rock got a little wet and has a little reflection on it. Yeah. Okay to talk about this stuff in the painting. Coming around this rock, I'm going to make sure that my water ripples look like they're coming around that rock. Mm -hmm. Just a little more energy. Now, like even here, I want to make sure that my water sure it comes alive. So it's not just like where there's a hard, like where there's a soft edge. Sometimes it's very important where there's a hard edge to show that something is what it is. And that helps that turn on that water, why that water gets pushed the way that it does mm -hmm. through this space. If you don't see that, you might not know why it did. If I need to get more water on my brush, I do. Where I need to have more hard edges, I make sure that I do. Now, also through here, I might want to add just a few more, like, not quite that intense, but I do want some little water reflections on this rock as well. That's a little bit of the all terrain blue and white. If I go too white, it's just kind of like spots, but I do want some of that. Mm -hmm. And you that, can see that that is very nice. A little glisteny. Yeah, just a little bit. And how we say the water is emotion. I also have a bunch of plants. Mm -hmm. So let's start with a little of our ultramarine, not ultramarine, our thalo green and a little burnt sienna, but not as much burnt sienna this time. And let's come back here behind this rock. Make some flicking upward strokes. Kind of creating space between those two, doesn't it? Little grasses. Little grasses. And up along here, I want to make sure I've got a nice edge.
maybe a little green and yellow and kind of imply some wow distant little little vent of plant that's back there mm -hmm. nothing big just bits of something yep because this this world has plant life in it Now here at the edge of the stream, I'm going to add a little bit of a textured something. Come back into my yellow and give it some height. This is going to be a distant, um, if I take my yellow and my green and a little of my red, I'm going to make a very muted orange. Mm -hmm. This is going to be about some... flowers and that's why they're muted yeah. they're orange so you'll notice them but they're muted but they're going to tie into some orange flowers that are kind of more up front I'm just touching my brush into the canvas here touching it in you can always get just a little more red and yellow into the mix you just don't want it to be bright enough to pull deeply forward. Yeah. You can give them some dimensionality, as I am here. But you need to mute some of that color, otherwise they're going to be boom, in your face, hmm. which you don't want, really. And get a little of my green and yellow. More grasses. And what's wild is I can get some of this orange over here and kind of make a dead, a dead kind of grass space. Mm -hmm. You can get a little brown into it. And I'm just going to tap out a little bit of this. I'm just speaking to maybe dead undergrowth. Get a little white. You know, you got to have some dead flowers in the stones. Well, just some, just some like grass that's maybe aged out. And I can always pop that with a little bit of black, believe it or not. I pop a bit of that undergrowth and say, "Oh, hey, it was pretty. It was pretty rough here." So, like, mm. say here, I want to kind of talk about maybe some yellow grass falling down by really giving it a deep shadow. That's really going to help me. then I can start to get into my orange green I'm just kind of making these browns just talk a little bit about some falling grass there mm-hmm got a highlight mind if I pick up some black it's okay Creating some undergrowth. Just a little bit of off white, little dead plant. Speaking up here and there. Mm hmm. And then let's put in some not dead plants. 
which are also fun. A little of our brown and green together, and then we'll brighten as we go. I'm just doing some touch strokes. Mm -hmm. These are just to imply maybe something that's broader leaf. The long thin strokes kind of imply grasses. If I add a lot of yellow and a little bit of white, I can get a really nice light color. Just change up my textures. Tap my brush up and down. I don't have to. No, and I can always go back into phthalo green, which in this kind of environment is a super powerful color. Yeah. So I'm just creating a lot of dimensionality. to say that there's different types of plants here and where necessary I'll say that there's grasses or broad leaves or flowers mm -hmm. we'll layer over our dead grass a lot but you can do it layer over your dead grass a lot more yellow And some white. It's a nice little patch of something. I'll get a nice, very kind of light yellow green going here. Mm hmm. Do some upward strokes. The thing I'm really going to want to have going on here is that I'm not going to want to uh, have my grass be ruly or these blades of wild plants. Be ah. They really need to be. Even if I go into my orange and make a brown and kind of come in here and mm -hmm. come in the underbrush. And I'm really having to decide right now if compositionally, you know, I want to go for that next layer of plant. Oh, yeah. You have to decide that about this stage. Pick the other flowers or. Yeah. Well, that. I really liked it with the irises quite a lot. So I kind of want to tie it back into that skill set. Mm hmm. So. It's pretty good. I may come back with a little bit of black. Maybe come under some of these. Make sure there's a little depth if I need to. But I'm not going to work it through a lot because if I did, all the green would disappear. Oh, yeah. And we don't want all the green to disappear.
I don't really ever go too on the, the thalo in this kind of space. And the reason for that is that um, it's very transparent. You need, you need more. And come back over here and even give this some dimensionality. A little bit more in this. See how that gives it just a little bit of oh yeah something there. It really fills the shore out. It does now. So I'm going to take my. I think I'll start with some. Thalo green and burn sienna mm -hmm. because it does neutralize the, the intensity of the thalo green. And I'm going to come here. And I've got to decide how do I want to pull these in? Like, how do they represent in this space? Make a leaf that maybe curls a bit. Maybe make a leaf that curls a lot. Maybe make some that go off. Need to make this a little bit taller. Even if it is going to curl, you want some height and high low kind of differential. Mm hmm. here and a little perhaps a little brown and make something a little different structured I and like that's why I was like you don't want to paint out you don't want to put all of your effort here because if it's going to be peeking through you just want it to look correct for peeking through different little leaves for something that's here a little more brown in those leaves curl some lines back and I'll open them up and so what we're really trying to say is that perhaps there's a little bit mm. of a foreground that we're Getting a hint of and we have to think about how we want to oh I like the foreground glad we went for the foreground so on the leaves where I want to turn them I'm going to get into my green gold that I made with the burnt sienna thalo green and cad yellow get kind of a light color and I will Kind of come on that edge and sort of start to express perhaps that highlight. Trying to find the edges where that could have. Mm -hmm. Highlighted and then turn the leaves. These are kind of broad leaves. Some fun to speak to their shape. Then maybe here, a 
little short inward stroke. Mm -hmm. These are little bits of thoughtful something else. Little flicking strokes. Add a little white into that yellow green I have. I just want to paint them so that they feel like they're twisting right there, mm. taking shape in front of us. Come back with a little dark green. Wow. Darken this how I need to. Make sure that I'm creating a contrast here. Mm -hmm. That yeah, that little extra lined edge really makes them pop up. So just twisting those little leaves. Playing with our greens. And that's sort of fun to do. Yeah. Now I'm going to get a little of my uh, yellow and red over here, but I'm not going to rinse out my brush. So it has almost like it has a feel of a perhaps green in it still. Mm-hmm. And this is like kind of how I get sometimes my plant life. Kind of a green orange going on here, mm -hmm. right? Very. Tuck one back here. Rinse out. I'm going to get some white on that mm -hmm. and make sure that I have a bit of a kind of glittering, sparkling highlight on those where the sun catches them in a couple places so that they have contrast. You don't want just one value. Right. All right, the red, the red, the red, and it's quite red, but I am going to take, I think I'll start with just a smidge of ultramarine, and I'm going to make, it's still going to be pretty bright, but it's going to have a shadow to it so I can build up highlights into a really bright, vibrant orange. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give the shape of the flower. Just the shape. 
Oh, that really nice size. I mean, that's all we're trying to do is give it a shape. We will delineate petals and things. You know, as we go. We will speak to size. And we'll hide little buds here and there. And this is a lot like that irises, right? We were doing mm -hmm. those irises and it was just, we spoke to shape. We spoke to form is really what we're saying. A weird little gloppy form here. You can see that. Then I'm going to take a little of my cad red and some of my cad yellow and start to get into kind of like an orange. Mm -hmm. I like the flowers in the foreground. I do too. I'm glad I went for it. Now I'm going to kind of individually talk about there's petals. That we're going to be seeing. This is just a lighter orange. So we did a darker red and then we're hitting it with a lighter orange. Mm -hmm. These are mild touches. I see the placement of the petals there. Touch full stroke. They're abstracted and yet again, they're not abstracted. We just recognize that sometimes in nature, depending on our point of view, mm -hmm. we may see details or not see details. I like to dry here because I don't want any blending on the next layers because right. I want the next layers to pop up. So I'm going to dry. I'm going to take a little bit of this orange I just made for these petals and touch a couple spots back here. And this kind of implies, perhaps, I can even come and get into a little of this red. I don't want it to be bright, bright, but we're kind of trying to say that what's happening up front has happened back here. So mm. There's almost like a pulling down. Like a continuity of flowers. There's a continuity of flowers. We want some continuity in our flowers. Now I'm going to add a lot more yellow and get a much brighter orange. Kind of come in the center here. Centers are a little fluffy. Little touches of dots and things. I kind of find it helpful. starts to really be something it really does and then I'm going to grab a little more yellow and white it's mixed into that orange and kind of tap up and down a little kind of halo in them yeah mm-hmm Sort of like implying that it's a little crown up here, a little some things, doesn't it? Wow. That's sort of super fun. Yeah, it really is.
while you're here, take a little bit of your uh, grayed out red. This is the one you do with your ultramarine blue. And just make sure that you pop some of this color through here so that it feels like maybe some of these are a little out of focus out of your sight. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can do is you can run petals down the waterfall. Ooh. So I'll show you how you do that real quick just because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? That also sort of speaks to the trajectory of the water. And if you get a little bigger as they come oh, yeah. here, maybe uh, one could be falling down here. Get into my little brighter orange. Just talking about that the uh, plant life here. Now it's like a, a little garden, isn't it? It really is. It looks really pretty. You don't have to do that if you don't want to have flowers coming down. You don't have to have flowers. But I think that if you're going to have a bright pop of orange in front of a green piece and you have a little bit back there, it kind of tells a story. Mm -hmm. That might make, you know, chances of you getting this photograph like this are pretty slim. This is a world that exists in your artwork. <laughs> this is really pretty, though. You know, and that lets you say this this garden has is in the middle of seasons and it has stuff going on and. I like it very much. Okay, there's a good little bit of petal hop back there again. So that explains the petals coming forward. Mm -hmm. I always like to add highlight to things if I can. Help them, help them find their drama. Yeah. There. We've got lots of drama and light coming down. Okay. We did it. That's amazing. It was a big one, I know. So if you've got to break it into steps, if you've got to break it into days, if you're, if you're doing this painting, just this painting with me, you take your time, you pace yourself, you keep it comfortable, pay attention to your physicality. If you're doing the acrylic April challenge, if April has to go into May, that's okay. <laughs> that should be a shirt. If April's got to go into May, that's okay. <laughs> because we're learning a lot of concepts here, and we're trying to come out of this month with a real understanding of water. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys will come back tomorrow and join me for the next leg. You're going to have to our... sign it, though. Oh, yeah. So you can't just, you're going to be like, We'll have to add a step if you don't sign it. It's true. And I was just fully saying goodbye. <laughs> you were. I felt it. I was like, I felt a disturbance in it. <laughs> she's, she's signing she's off. She's saying goodbye. <laughs> you got right to sign that rock. I'm going to sign this rock. Put it under your come thumb. here. I want to do it in a way, you know, I want, I think I'll do it along the water. I want you to be able to see it, but I don't want it to be a complete disruption to the painting. I'll do it along the water coming out, mm. like graffiti or something. That's Not okay. fun for a framer where I signed it, but makes me happier because I don't want to like have the whole thing be like. You know what you like. My signature. <laughs> ah, enjoy my signature. Don't you love it? I do. Okay. Yeah, you do. You're very sweet. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye bye.